Hello, it's Debbie Gilbert from the Business Awards Show, and I'm also the founder of the Best Business Women Awards. And today I'm joined by Emma Carroll from Choose to Grow LND, um, who is a business leadership coach and was also the winner of the Best Coach 2022 in the Best Business Women Awards. And Emma's going to talk to us a bit about her business, her business journey, and all of the lovely stories she can share about business awards because she's got some great little nuggets to share with you today. So welcome, Emma. Oh, thank you very much for having me. <laughs> so the last time we met was back in September at the Best Business Women Awards Gala Awards Night. Yeah. And you picked up the Gold Award for Best Coach. How did that yeah. feel? Probably one of the best professional um, evenings I've ever had, if I'm honest. I get, I'm getting goosebumps just like reliving it with you now. It was amazing. I remember looking across at you and the look of, on your face was just sheer shock I and know. delight mixed together. <laughs> yeah, I remember sitting around the table saying, please let it be me, but it probably oh. won't be. Oh. <laughs> Which is what every business owner must probably think when they're at those awards. Exactly. And that wasn't your first award this year, was it? So tell us a bit more about this year and what's been going on with awards. Yeah, so we've had a, a fantastic year um, and awards is not something I've ever done before as part of my marketing strategy. Um, but I have um, recently been on a sort of entrepreneurial course that talked about raising my profile. And, and I just kind of realised that in my industry, we've done quite a lot through the pandemic period, which is obviously a challenge for all businesses. And I just thought, OK, now's the time maybe to talk about that. Um, so we started talking about it in award submissions and we've been lucky enough to be very successful. I'm having a good run. Let's just put it that way. So, so it's, been, it's been three this year in total. Yeah, yeah three in three months. Really. Well, nearly four months, but I'm, I'm, I'm running with the three in three kind of uh, strap line at the moment because it's, you know, obviously very exciting. So, mm. um, yes, prior to the Best Coach Award with yourself, we won. Uh, Wales HR Consultancy of the Year so that was for, and that was really a team effort award with my team um, who are amazing um, so I was really pleased for them that we picked that one up it was a big scoop for us in Wales. Mm -hmm. Brilliant and what's the third one after ours then? So just recently I've been listed in the top 100 female entrepreneurs to watch with NatWest and The Telegraph. So this is another really big, exciting win for us. Um, for me to be listed in the top 100 in the whole of the UK, amazing. Fantastic news. So where did this journey begin? Tell us about your business and when you started it. Yeah, so I started off as a sole trader. Um, and it was a business I wanted to fit around my children. So I decided I left the corporate world to um, specialise in learning and development with an expertise in leadership. Um, once I qualified to do all of that, I then went out and worked for other training providers, sort of cut my teeth there, and then decided that I wanted to have my own kind of principles around coaching and learning development. Um, and most of those are based around uh, neuroscience. I'm, I'm quite into how the brain functions within the corporate world and how we can make things brain friendly. So I decided to really accelerate then, choose to grow, because I could deliver things in the way that I wanted to deliver them for greater impact. And it's just gone from strength to strength. So officially, you know, I would say Choose to Grow has really been alive for five years, but I've been out, out of the corporate world for seven and building my business. And what sort of clients do you work with? So we work with, a, a, not industry specific, so any kind of organisation where there's a human element to management. Um, so we work in anything from pharmaceuticals, retail, aerospace. We've done work in manufacturing. We are working now, um, I'm working in moving more into the space of financial services and uh, legal services as um, organisations grow. So we're helping them with their kind of growth plans and helping their equip their leaders to be able to manage people effectively. So there's a great lived experience in their organisation for their employees. So give us some examples of some of the things you might do with a business. So typically we would go in and look at um, kind of where they're at. Um, at that stage. So we usually get um, commissioned to go in and talk about um, what we can do with leadership skills. So we have off the shelf programs that we use. So our pivot program is what we've been winning the awards for really that we've been talking about behind the scenes. That's our flagship leadership development program. Um, and that works on five principles and it's got a strong coaching 
um, leadership ethos to it. So um, we that's kind of our um, flavor of the month, if you like. And that is a leadership development program that helps leaders to lead continual change and keep employees engaged. Um, but we can also, you know, get kind of start the conversation around that when organizations think, yes, that's really attractive to us. But then when I get in to do the discovery consultation, other things can present. So just like today, um, we're looking at building an appraisal system for an organization who haven't got an appraisal framework in place. And we're designing that for them and then delivering soft skills training to support that. Brilliant. And what are we, what are you finding at the moment that businesses are struggling with? What's their challenges in this Precise yeah. climate that we're in. But I think going into the pandemic, we were really focused on resilience. Um, that personal well-being and resilience was quite low. Um, <laughs> people were feeling overworked, stretched, and then the pandemic hit, and that turned the way that we were working on its head. So that that kind of presented some solutions to some of those problems, actually, where people were striking more balance. Some organizations were reported in the same productivity, but people were at home great but as that's gone on what we're now starting to see is the employee value proposition is dropping for organizations because of the engagement levels so we're losing the heart of the business if you like you know bringing people together all under one roof and helping to shape those values and live in those values and behaviors in the work that they do um so we're now really working a lot in that space so thinking about org letting organizations really have a look at where they are now since they've come out of that change where how they want people to work hybrid usually a bit of both mm -hmm. um and now we're upskilling leaders to really look at what is the truth then that sits within that how are people coping with that what's their promise as an employee and how do, can we help them enhance the lived experience the truth if you like between the promise mm -hmm. and and actually what's happening the re reality um for people employees that are working for organizations now fantastic and how did you as a business cope with the pandemic Wow, that's a really great question. Um, well, in true Emma Carroll choose to grow style, you know, we 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 when there's a challenge, we tend to put our energy towards it. So that's definitely my approach. When there's adversity, we you know I, I kind of jump in with two feet and, and kind of work with it and try and look for the opportunity. Mm. So for us, we definitely pulled together as a team. And I think that's what really kind of made us stand out in that period to win the awards was that we we said, what can we do and how can we keep, you know, how can we still serve our clients? So we went online like most organizations have had to do that. But delivering training interventions online and still having that human connection is actually quite a challenge. So we did really focus on how we made that work. We did a lot. We did a lot of kind of retraining ourselves or thinking about how we can adapt and overcome some of the things that we would have done face to face online. And that went really well. You know, we had a lot of clients that stayed with us and we attracted some new ones. Um, we had to diversify. We would we would also do in things like um, conferences for organizations. We were facilitating those online, which isn't something that we would have usually done, but they needed help with the engagement and they were afraid of the tech for large numbers of people, whereas we'd quickly got into that and wanted to get involved in that and understand it. So we, I felt that really served us really well to be able to cope with new ways of delivering what we deliver, you know, in a different way through that period. And now I think we've got a really nice blend so we can we can do it all now. So we can come back face to face if, if we want to, if that's what our clients want. But we are really still really effective online, too. So it's, it's, it's actually made us a better training provider as a result, I think. Fantastic. And where do most of your leads come from? Is it referrals? Is it you know networking or linkedin or yeah well previously it was referrals i think a very small um conversions came from marketing obviously i do all the pillars of marketing anyway um and then through the pandemic um that was slow because there's no opportunity to network um that you know we couldn't i wasn't coming face to face with my clients to tell them about new things we were doing i was hardly going into any organizations to feel the need to be able to build on those um solutions that we can provide which often happens so i decided to focus on profile and then that's raising my profile online um gifting my knowledge through my marketing and um entering awards <laughs> which brings, brings us nicely on to the topic of awards so what made you think that awards would be a good pathway for you and your business yeah well I was actually scared of awards to be honest so if anyone is listening to this and thinking oh I'm not sure if awards are for me I was there 
Um, I used to think that the wards were kind of, I don't know, a bit fixed maybe, <laughs> or, you know, quite negative. Uh, I think my, my fear around it, you get the fear of rejection of not winning, you know, um, and that's you know, something you have to overcome. Um, but what I quickly realized, the, once we won the first one, I quickly realized it kind of validated me and my company. And I quickly realized that actually we have a lot to offer and we're really good at what we do. And before that, even though I was selling that and I felt that I didn't have that validation. So I, I feel that it, you know, it, it's been a great kind of vehicle for my confidence and for the validation of my company. Um, and yeah, once we did, once it, you do one, it gets a little bit addictive. So <laughs> I think, you know, I had a plan to do the three. I picked the three that I, with help from a company who um, I work with closely to help me do that. Um, and they helped me, um, one, identify awards that were right for me, and then also help me to evidence base um, what what my company is doing. So they turned my company inside out to show the judges what, 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 what it is that we were doing um, and the quality that we have in the company. So, um, yeah, so it really it was like that kind of partnership with them that helped made me do that. They said, this is this is the way to go. You should do some awards up your profile um, and that will help you to get your brand out there, really. And it has because I'm now meeting people that I've never met before. I'm having great opportunities to talk in spaces that I've never talked in before about my company. Um, and actually, I realized my company's had a really great journey. <laughs> And it's, it's actually quite fun. <laughs> well, I mean, you may or may not know this, but our entries are independently judged by three different judges. OK, I did not know that. So the scores are then added up and the person with the ah. most scores is the winner. And if we do okay. get a draw, that's handed over to our head judge to decide who the winner will be. Uh, robust. So you have got a great validation there because it's been externally judged and it's not a voting competition and it's not fixed at all so I think that does give you a sense that your business is definitely going in the right direction you know you're ticking an awful lot of boxes to win an award um, so that should give you a lot of confidence and a lot of pride in what you've yeah. been doing yeah it does. Um, what I wanted you to share was I saw you'd written a really interesting blog about mm -hmm. your award win and I just want you to share with our listeners a bit about the other things that have come out of the awards apart from the trophy yeah okay so um that's that's the bigger piece about this isn't it it's not just about the awards so um the added value I feel that like I've got from this whole experience which I didn't expect was that I was able to connect with other business people on at the award ceremony and um there was some amazing silver medalists in in my category who I am now able to collaborate with and work with because I know they're already of a standard because they've come through the all process uh, and they were shortlisted as a finalist themselves. So I've made a great connection um, with uh, another coach who um, we were actually on the phone last night until I, I got in late. So my husband was like, where have you been? I was like, oh, because I actually got to speak to her. <laughs> <laughs> and we were just already, you know, talking about how we were going to be working together. And that's really, really exciting um, to leverage that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I also um, really connected with the host. Mm -hmm. um, we came come from the same part of the world, uh, Claire. So we've already met and we've started to talk how we can work together in business, which is brilliance because she's got a great profile um, and a great story about her business and how she's adapted um, in, in times of uh, and had to diversify in times um, where you know her business hasn't been going so well so I learned a lot from her and her resilience so that was amazing and we're going to be doing some work together yeah. so awesome um, the other things that have come out of it my local radio contacted me straight away I didn't you know just from somebody seeing my post on Facebook so um, I went on to uh, BBC Radio Hereford and Worcester and in my own area and I talked about the award win um, and how we won it and everything that, that kind of goes with that so I got it's a great opportunity to talk locally about my company because I do work all around the UK so um, it was really nice to kind of talk about my company on the map in my community so that was good and from that um, I won some local work which was really nice for me um, and it's also helped me my I think my existing clients who are already with me um, it kind of it's really strengthened that relationship even more so 
what I've seen is it's it's not that they were going anywhere, but they have definitely rebooked and stayed with me. And they're they're just as happy for me that we've won the award and used their the work that we've done with them as the evidence base to win that. Um, so it's strengthened that relationship. It's helped me retain clients, I would say. Um, two new pieces of work out of it. And, you know, let's be honest. That's why we want to we want to talk about our businesses. We want to win work. Exactly. So, yeah. So and it's only been what a couple of months. So and um, for me. You know, I don't have high volumes of leads. If what I deliver are large scale projects that can take a while to convert. So it's kept the, the wheel turning on its own without me having to keep spinning it in, in some senses. You know, I'm getting invited to talk to you today more about it. So it's just opened up those kind of opportunities, really, um, to, yeah, to just it's, it's the wider value around it. It's definitely opened that up. So you've got rid of your awards phobia now. Uh, I'm t- well, I've got, a new, I've got a new phobia because it's like when you're on a winning streak, what do you do? <laughs> I'd actually really love to be part of the judging process at some point. I think that's that would be really great. But I've got a couple of other little ones that I want to go for, but I haven't got anything in the pipeline yet about where I'm going with that. I'm just still trying to get over the recovery and shock of winning the three. <laughs> we will talk to you about judging because we'd love okay. to be on our panel. Um yeah, I mean, speaking as somebody, I'd, I'd won a few awards when I set up the Best Business Women Awards, and I have been both a finalist, and I've both been a winner, and I've also not been shortlisted. I've entered things that I've, you know, just not been chosen for. And I think it's the awards thick skin that you have to grow. Yeah. Yeah. I just accept that sometimes it's not even maybe the entry you put together. It's just the fact that other people in the category, it was really competitive. Yeah. And it hasn't deterred me. I entered the FSB awards this year and I was a finalist. I didn't win, but it was nice to be there at the final. And that's when I reconnected with David Bell, who turned out to be one of the judges for my awards. Yeah, so yeah, it's that's that, the it's, thing. Yeah. It's, it's uh, the added bonuses, isn't it? And this is mm. why it's great to talk to you because actually... I think as well, you've maximised the opportunities that are out there. You've actually acted upon it. Instead of just coming to the final and not following up with anybody, you've actually been very active and followed up with people. And it's great to hear that you and Claire are going to be working together because we loved Claire. We thought she was a really great host this year and really brought the energy to the room. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about business tips because you've been in business a long time. Plus you also work with businesses. Now you're probably a mine of information, but we want to narrow it down to one or two good tips that you could pass on to anyone listening to this show. Okay. Um, I suppose, uh, and this is, this is a saying that's not mine. So this has come from another entrepreneur and coach that I use. But um, I read a lot of Daniel Priestley's work and he talks about um, being prolific Mm -hmm. and I am far from perfect. So for me, my struggles um, and vulnerabilities always come around um, kind of I'm dyslexic. So I find it hard to communicate in, in written form. So I would procrastinate about writing a blog or talking about things in written form on my my posts and things like that. So um, for me that was a really big one around prolific beats perfect and actually if you can you know don't just if you've got something to share about your business it's really important or the mess you've got a message in your business that is going to be a solution for somebody you need to just make sure that you are consistent all the time and being prolific so you are the face face of that um and I think that's my biggest piece that I learned through COVID because if I if I kind of surrendered to that I don't think I would have had a voice through that whole period I wouldn't have been able to speak to anyone I could only do it through that medium um and you know that really it has been the thing that's kind of kept us alive Mm. um during that time so so that for me being prolific I always think just well how am I being prolific and how am I being consistent Mm. in what I in my message and and to my audience and what I'm and what I'm trying to to convey really that's really good advice actually um and if business is perfect <laughs> and if business <laughs> if, on it, really. if you are struggling with your business would you advise people to go and find a good coach to work with well obviously I'm in the coaching business so I'm going to advocate that having that third independent third party is is invaluable mm-hmm. um but a good network around you is good enough so you know coaching can be expensive um, and I would advocate business coaches are great at what they do, um, but you can still also 
drive a culture of a network around you for your for business resilience just by making sure that you pull the right people around you and you use that so for example um i've got some key business people we we don't we don't charge each other but we meet regularly and kind of action in together and hold each other account that's a really good community that helps me when particularly when things are challenging which they are from time to time um so that's a form of coaching it doesn't have to be the formal coach yeah. road, I guess. I'm not going to try and sell that to anyone. It, it, you know, it, um, I am, you know, obviously, if you're a leader and you need some coaching, I'm here. <laughs> but, um, you know, you can do it. You can be creative as a business owner. You know, you haven't always got that funding for yourself as you of the MD of the business. So you, you need to be creative with this stuff. Yeah, it's good advice. And what's in the plans for the next 12 months for Choose to Grow? Wow. Um, so... Winning the three awards, I actually went through my own little kind of uh, mini credit crunch because I had a really full diary um, at the point, and so did my team at the point of um, the first, winning the first award, and we have done all the way through the pandemic. And then something happened. I won that award, and then I was coming to your award, and everything just went really quiet. It was like a ah, moment, which has never happened, actually which taught me a lot. So I was winning awards. You're on stage one minute and putting out fires the next. So, you know, that's that's an interesting concept for the entrepreneur, I guess. Um, but being being able to ride that mentally was quite challenging for me. Um, and now things are just flying again. So, you know, it, you have those moments. Um, so I'm on the coming out of that, but I'm definitely going into the new year with, with um, being shortlisted in the final 100 mm -hmm. for NatWest and the Telegraph. Part of that, um, of being in the shortlist, is the top 10 receive investment and mentoring from the board at NatWest. Wow. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I'm not, I'm not um, expecting to come out in the top 10. <laughs> as, uh, I'm sitting yeah, on that table. I'm yeah. sitting on that table again going, I want it to be me, but it probably yeah. won't be. <laughs> but I do think that the, we had to go through quite a lot of financial compliance to, to be shortlisted for the 100. So I'm hoping that I can now be quite um, appealing to investment. So, and I've got a, a quite a five-year plan mm -hmm. to um, productize the Pivot Leadership Programme so other practitioners like me can deliver an award-winning coaching service from the learning that I've learned. So that's my big dream, is that I have other practitioners in other businesses, not my own, delivering my work. That would be amazing. Fantastic. I'm hoping that's where it goes. Wow, it all sounds really exciting. So thank you for joining me today, Emma. No we should be waiting with bated breath to see if you get in that top 10, but even being in the top 100 is a massive achievement. So yeah, well done for that. Thank you so much. And uh, we wish you continued success with your business. Thank, oh, thank you. you very much for having me. Thank you.